All right, so we're looking at the special angle pairs homework, and we're going to start with number six. Assume that the measure of angle TXF, if you were wondering what that little M in front of the angle means, that means the measure of angle TXF. So we follow the letters G to X to F, and that angle is 40 degrees. The measure of FXC is 30 degrees. Find each measure. So we're going to start with those two numbers. We're going to use what's marked on our picture, what's given to us, and we're going to find pretty much all the other angles in the picture. Let's start with our special angle pairs. What are they? We've got vertical angles. We've got complementary angles. We've got linear pairs. Those are the types of angles that we're going to be looking for. Let's start with vertical angles. Do you see some vertical angles? Take a look at that 40, and I can find the angle that is vertical, that is opposite, and I can label it 40. I can find the angle that's opposite 30, and I can label it 30. So I'm using the theorems we learned in class. If two angles are vertical angles, then they are congruent. Alrighty, now we can use um, this marking right here which indicates that those lines or arrays are perpendicular. Since they're perpendicular, we know that AXF is a 90 degree angle. So, if this is 9 degrees, and I've used up 40 degrees, I have 50 degrees left. So we subtracted there. Um, we've got one angle to go kind of right here. We're looking for this angle right here. And what I like to do when I'm kind of missing one angle out of a lot is I like to look for straight lines. I see a straight line right here. Straight lines have got to cover. They are always 180 degrees. So what you could do is you could take 30 and 50 and 40 and you could subtract it from 180 and you would get the missing angle. Another way you could have solved that is you could in a line like this, if I know this angle is 90, then this angle must also be 90, because 180 take away 90 gives you 90 left over. So I could have concluded that this was 90, and then the 90 minus 30 and gotten 60 that way as well. I think I found all the angles we needed there. This is vertical angles, it looks like. What's that one there? We've used up 70, and we have 180, so that was not a right angle, even though it looked like it, right? It was not a right angle. That was 110, and I used the fact that those angles add up to 180. Let's look at number 9. Now, notice 7, 8, and 9. First, they ask you for the relationship. When you're solving problems, when you're trying to solve for x, Setting up the equation is the geometry part of it. Do I add them to equal 180? Do I add them to equal 90? Do I set them equal to each other? That is the relationship. So if you can establish what the relationship is, it'll tell you what equation to set up. So first, let's take a look at our picture and see what angles we're given. G, X, C. Whoa, that's an odd two thing. Oh, well, maybe. We can't, we can't assume, right, guys? And G, X, X. So the first thing I do is decide what angles those are. What is the vocabulary word? And some students would say adjacent, but you know what? They're more than that. Some students would say supplementary, and you're right. They are. But the relationship we want you to write, the most specific name you could give it is linear pair. And we learned a theorem today about linear pair. If two angles form a linear pair, then they are supplementary. So we're not going to set them equal. Supplementary means we add them to x squared plus 15 plus 4x plus 5 equals 180. Supplementary means their sum is 180, so you need to sum them. You need to add them. Okay, now what I notice is that this is a k-level problem. This is a quadratic, which means we need to factor. So this is a factoring problem. I know that to factor, I need to move everything to one side of the equation. Before I do that, I'm going to clean this up, and I'm going to combine my terms. I'm going to work up here. 2x squared plus 4x, and I'm going to combine.
combining plus 20 equals 180. Because I have to factor, I'm going to subtract 180 from both sides. Because I know I need to set it equal to 0 to be able to factor. So I combined like terms, then I moved the 180 over. Now, we avoid factoring a problem with a leading coefficient at all costs. This is a leading coefficient. If you can avoid it, avoid it, and you know what we can. Because each one of those terms is divisible by 2. So just literally divide everything by 2. So you're kind of getting rid of that 2. You're pulling the 2 out. You're stacking. So I'm going to divide everything by 2. And I'm left with x squared plus 2x minus 80 equals 0. Okay, that's as small as I can get it. It's clean. It's all on one side of the equation. Now we can stack. I need to brainstorm things that multiply the 80. Hmm, I've got 4 and 20, but could I make a 2, that middle term is 2, could I make a 2 out of a 4 and a 20? Add them, no, subtract, no, okay. Um, 8 and 10, ooh, that looks good. Can I make a 2 out of an 8 and a 10? 10 minus 8, yep. I want the 2 to be positive. So I want the bigger number to be positive. I want it to be plus 10 minus 8. We are one step away from solving for x. We set these equal to 0. x plus 10 equals 0 because you know what? It does right there. And x minus 8 equals 0. We subtract 10 from both sides. We add 8 to both sides. It didn't even have a blank for x. We got all that work and it's not even a blank. So x equals negative 10 and 8. But don't stop there. I know you want to. You're like, are we done with this problem yet? Don't stop there. Make sure both of those make sense in the problem. If I plug 8 in here, yep, I'm good. Plug in here, yep, I'm good. Okay, now let's plug negative 10 in. If I plug negative 10 in here, I'm good. Uh-oh. If I plug negative 10 in here, I would have negative 40 plus 5. Ooh, I can't have a negative angle. So actually... You throw this one out. You don't even list it as an answer. So now let's doing, do some plugging in. 2 times 8 squared plus 15. So I know that this angle is 143. And I can just subtract that from 180. I mean, they're a linear pair. So I know this angle is 37. Let's see what it's looking for. It's looking for CXD. Well... I can use the vertical angle theorem, right? If two angles are vertical, then they are congruent. So I know CXD is congruent to GXF. So I can go ahead and put 37. And then AXD. Ooh, that's this angle right here. Well, what I can do there is I can use the fact that this is 90 because there was a box here. A right angle marking, and if this is 37, those are complementary angles. 90 minus 37. Is this the longest problem you've ever worked in your life? You want to be dramatic. Okay, yay, double number 9. Lastly, number 12. This one's so much faster than number 9. The measure of one angle is 8 times the measure of its supplement. So what I like to do is sketch a picture. I don't know what the angles look like. But I know there's for sure two angles involved, and I know they're supplementary. So when I see this word supplement, I immediately draw a straight line. I draw a linear pair. Name the smallest angle x, and then read your problem to decide what to name the other angle. The measure of one angle is 8 times the measure of its supplement. So I'm going to name one of them x, and then I'm going to name the other one 8x. You'll notice if we do angle addition, 8x plus x equals 180. Part plus part equals whole. There's one angle that has 8 times a number, and the other angle is just one of those numbers, just x. So we're adding them together. There are not 8 parts. There are 9 parts. 9x equals 180. Divided by 9, x is 20. So it says find the measures of the angles. One of them is 20. 
and the other one is 8 times 20. And then you can check your answer. Do those add up to 180? Check. Is 60 8 times 20? 20 times 8. Yep, check. We're good.